big thank you to the guys at We Are Stoke for sponsoring my match day vlogs this season. You can check them out on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook, linked in the description. Hey guys, Harvey SFC here and welcome to episode 4 of the Harvey SFC podcast. Again, I say it every week, we're getting, we're getting more organised, but this week it's just been an absolute shambles. We're downloading Skype, Zoom, whatever video chat thing we can under the sun 10 minutes before recording. We're recording this on the Friday because we were both busy on the Thursday, so it's carnage, absolute carnage. But today, we're going to be talking about the future of Stoke City uh, and what things we can start look, start to look forward to in the coming weeks, uh, well, not coming weeks, coming years. And today, we are again joined, regular um, guest on the podcast, we're joined by the Barefoot TV's Elliot Yates. Elliot, how are you? Week, whatever of lockdown, we're getting there. Yeah, we are getting there, and um, obviously there's going to be chats, I've heard there's going to be chats about Boris about easing the lockdown, but even so, I don't think we should be, you know, going outside and meeting mates just yet, until we get the all cleared to the vaccination, then mm-hmm. 100%. I'm definitely, yeah. I think it's, um, I think people uh, are starting to sort of, now we've passed the peak, people are starting to start, like, just, I don't know. It just starting to really annoy me how people are just now starting to like go outside, meet friends, meet family and stuff. Just, oh, we've not even had the government say you can do that. So we might turn around this weekend and say, no, we're in lockdown for another three weeks. But away from all of that, we're going to be talking about the future of Stoke City, as I've just said. So we're going to be talking about the academy. We're going to be talking about some of the first teamers who've got absolute bags of potential. And then we're going to be answering some of your questions that you sent in on Twitter and Instagram at the end. So, Elliot. Before we start, yeah. uh, not before we well, there's no Stoke news at all this week. Um, so, the academy. Yes. It's looking very bright. Yes, it is. And I think um, I only really started looking at the academy from, um, do you remember we got that massive investment in? It must have been about yeah. 2013. And since then, it's just the academy players just keep flowing through. I think probably Oliver Shenton was probably the first one to sort of, Make the grade in that system. Then there was a few that didn't really follow. Then you've got Tyrese Campbell, who then followed. Yeah. Tom Edwards was probably promoted to the first team season before. Like Nathan Collins, it's absolutely brilliant. I think to think about when I started supporting Stoke, I think we only had two academy graduates, and they were Wilco and uh, Ryan Shotton. And Ryan yeah. Shotton hadn't even made the grade yet, and Wilco was the only academy graduate in there, and he'd been in the team for only four years. And then you think before that, you've got Carl Henry. But these are all in like five-year gaps. Yeah. Gaps. So now we're actually getting more consistent academy players on a regular basis. So we've got probably as many academy players coming through as we did probably in the last 10, 15 years. Yeah, we've we've got some bright ones. Obviously, you've got the ones that have already broken through. Tyrese, Thibaut, Linden, Collins, Edwards, uh Sorensen to a degree, he yeah. started to break through. But then you've also got the ones that haven't broken through, looking at Corrigan, Forrester, McJanet, and then probably the most exciting one is Mo Sanko. Yeah, yeah. It's just a, it's a question as whether we can keep hold of them as well, because um, yeah. the only thing the thing we can offer them that no one else can is game time in the, game time. In the first team. Whereas I think Mo Sanko has been linked to Chelsea at one point, and they're not going to offer him game time. I, think... I mean, uh, go on. I think there's the problem that you face going to maybe, because this week there's been all sorts of clubs linked with Collins and Sanko. Um, you've got Juventus linked with Mo Sanko, you've got Barcelona, and I think that's just a bad move if he chooses to go there. Yes, he'll be getting coached, for, getting coached from the very, very best, but he won't get the game time as he would, say, here. Yeah. And the same with Collins at Arsenal, he'll be stuck in the academy and he won't be a first-team signing. Yeah, exactly. And I think with Collins as well, particularly if you go to somewhere like Chelsea, what they'll do is they'll send him out on loan to Batiste or wherever for about yeah. two years, and then they'll send him alone again and again. And it's just not going to be healthy for the player because he'll lose a load of confidence. Yeah, it's a bit like what's happened with Ethan Ampadu. He's just mm. ended up all over the place on loan. He was at... Uh, where is he now? He's at... Um, is it Leipzig? Leipzig. Yeah. Leipzig, yeah. Um, but he's been all over the place and I want to say he was in England at some point was it Swansea? Mm. I, I, know they ca- I know Chelsea bought him from an English club so um, that might be where you that got might that be from it. Um, 
but yeah, you've got, you know, going to an under 23s game is actually really exciting. Like before, you wouldn't really be excited to go, but now it's just like, oh, you know, let's see how much they've progressed because it is a case of how much they've progressed at game by game. Like from the West Ham game I went to in November time, October time, where they got battered 4 0. To compare it to, say, the Reading game or the Manchester United game, it, they looked better. They looked more developed, and and I'm looking forward to the next one and the next one because I'm, I'm I'm always up for going to the uh, academy matches. Um, so you've got like the under 18s that I went to, you've got the under 23s that I enjoy going to, um, and it's just good to see you know the future of the players we've got. I mean, Mo Sanko is something else. I, I really want to see him in the first team. Uh, October can't come soon enough. <laughs> If we keep him, yeah. If big if, but I think we might be able to touch wood, touch wood. Um, but then not only this, you've got players that have sort of half broken through. You're looking at Josh Timing, Lassie Sorensen, um, Tebow Verlinden to a degree, you'd say. To a Goy- degree, yeah. Um, Ingoy sort of broke through and then had to kind of break through again. Mm. Um, as um. I don't think time. I mean, time we never really produced. I think we just, we don't we bought him. Not like in a way we bought Campbell, but like time is established in a first team squad. Then we bought him, but he's been stuck in reserves. And I don't personally. I don't think he's quite he's quite good enough. Yeah, like, he hasn't been good enough think, for years. To think that summer window we could have signed either Josh Timon or Andy Robertson. <laughs> you know, from Hall. Yeah. Obviously, I'd rather have signed that Andy, Andy Robertson because look, at, and we look signed at, Vim, we signed Vimmer instead of Harry Maguire. Yeah, yeah. Um, Can't right. But, but yeah, that window was just a bit of a disaster. We signed Hesse. We signed Hesse. We signed who else? Chupo. Staffelidis. Staffelidis was the January wasn't it? Oh, still same season. Yeah, and then you know. Did you see that stat about Sorensen um, the other day? Yeah. How yeah, he's yeah, beating that. like everyone because you know basically all the players wear it when training or doing gym work. They wear one of them sports fest things, and the and lastly Sorensen got the highest out of everyone I think for speed run. I think he averaged like five point five miles and meters per second yeah. on a run. I think he beat um, Jesse Lingard. Yeah. Well, it's not hard to beat Jesse Lingard at anything, um, especially goals and assists ratio. Um, oh, lockdowns, lockdowns, dearie me, lockdown is hitting hard. Um, but yeah, it's. It, I think what we else we've got look for, got to look forward to as well. Tyrese Campbell signed that five year deal, and I can remember it was the Swansea game. Four year uh, deal. It was uh, a four year deal. Yeah. Same thing. Um, uh, no, that Swansea game we were talking outside the uh, players' entrance, and I think it just felt you felt like a bit, not a buzz, but a lift. Yeah, there was a massive, massive lift, and I think everyone was really anxious as to whether we'd keep him or to whether we'd lose him, and I think it just helped everyone just going into that Swansea game. And I think it gave the team a lift. Obviously, he wasn't playing because he was injured, but I yeah. feel like that sort of made the difference. I feel like it did as well. It shows the ambition we have, I think, as well, and I think we want to display that for the fans. Mm. So, um, we got this ambition. I mean, that Klukas goal, I think that had a benefit. I think it was a that factor, the Klukas goal, the whole roar when that went in. I think that was to, all to do with uh, Tyrese's contract as well. Because did, did they announce it on the Friday? They announced it the Friday evening. Okay, because uh, they, I think they did, because... Um, I could tell because it was such a huge lift. I think if it was they announced it the day after the West Brom match, you think, oh, great, 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 great to the game, and it's just like a normal game. But because it was soon after, there was like a massive buzz around the place. Yeah, the only thing that I wish they'd have done differently is maybe brought him out. Yeah, Like, maybe. brought him out at half-time or before the game like they do when we sign a player. I wish they'd have brought him out and said, oh, Tyrese, four half new deal, and then I thought, hey. Um, but I think that's massive. Um I think with that, I think if we can keep him for all them years, and if we go up to the Premier League, I think that'll be he'll be he'll be genuine. I think he'll be one of the best strikers in the division next year. I think 
I think if Sanko comes through, he can maybe push Tom Ince out of the team and push Tyrese out wide. Sanko in the middle, Tebow on the left, or McLean. You've got brilliant front three there. Yeah. Um, get that left back situation sorted. Mm, Suddenly yeah. you've got a good defence. Keep Jack. Solid Keep enough Jack. goalkeeper. Touch wood. And your midfield three, Klukas, Powell and uh, Allen. It, it's not a bad squad, is it? No, no, it's not. It's not a bad squad at all. And you look at the bench as well in that. I think so much got quality. Players like, yeah, so Tommy Smith and Tom Edwards are competing with each other. Yeah. Like, none of them are knowing whether they're going to get a game. And I think that just shows the quality we have. If we, if we can do that with a left back as well, that'd be brilliant. Like, get a good left back in, or maybe even develop Ryan Corrigan, or like the centre back options are okay as well. Like, mm. Shawcross is always good when he's in. Collins uh, is brilliant. Yeah, I think next year, I think, might be Ryan's last season. Potentially. We'll I think see. it might be Ryan's last season next year. Um, mm. It just depends how he recovers from these injuries he's had. Um, and then, obviously, you've got Collins, Bart, Martin Zindi, if we manage to keep him. Can't really see that happening. No, and then you've always no. got some of the other academy lads, like Forrester and McJanet, to come through. And then, yeah. obviously, we turn to the left-back situation. You've got Ryan Corrigan and Josh Tymon coming through. But then, also, do you do you keep Stephen Ward on? Uh, for a character, yes. Not for someone who plays a lot of games. I think he's, yeah. good, he's got promoted with Burnley. Uh, did he get promoted with Wolves? Maybe. Sure. But, um, yeah, very good person to have around the place in terms of the experience you need. Especially, we're going to sign a young left-back as well. I think he'll be good for that. I think just giving some giving some advice, giving some pointers on like how to do this. Yeah, and there's two left backs that really stand out for me. There's one that's sort of realistic, but then there's one that's not very realistic at all. My first one is Jamal Lewis, Norwich left back, yeah. Northern Irish. Worked with O'Neill in the past. It'd be a sensible signing. He's done really well for Norwich, and if Norwich come down, I think we might be able to hopefully poach him, hope poach him off him. Uh, Poach him off them. Um, and then obviously you've got Prosper Mendu's out in uh, Norway. And then I know you had a, a point or two to make about Prosper Mendy. Mm, just don't think he's what we need going forward. Because he's from the Norwegian League. Not, that's not me judging him as a player, because like Erling Haaland's come from the Norwegian League. But like was I that, just think it's... Was that, uh, no, it was the Austrian League. Slasberg. Uh, oh, I think he went somewhere before, but um, oh. what's it? I think... I uh, just think he's too early. I think it's too early to get someone from a Norwegian league in here. We need someone who's championship proven mm. to actually be the first team left back. I think that's what we need going forward. And Jamal Lewis is obviously that sort of type of character, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd hundred percent. I'd rather have Jamal Lewis over Prosper Mendy, but I think for four hundred k, I think it's sort of a gamble worth taking. Mm, maybe we'll have to see what happens. It's, it, it, it depends what happens with the transfer window because obviously, if the transfer window doesn't sort of, sort of doesn't go ahead as normal, and you've got very limited time, then it could be difficult. Yeah. Um, and then the final um, bit I wanted to mention about the um, the the um, future. Sorry, um, was we've got. We some of the January signings we made. You look at Tasha Nokia Booth and Jordan Thompson. You know, yeah. they've both got bags of potential. I've been really impressed with them in the first couple of games. Uh, Thompson put some beautiful deliveries into the box, uh, both for, uh, from set pieces. He's done really well um, in attacking midfield and defensive midfield as well. He's sort of box to box. He's, he loves to get over all over the place. And you've got Tasha Nokia Booth. Took him a little while to sort of get going in that whole game, but once he got going and basically set that fifth goal up for Nick Powell by himself. Took the ball yeah. off Ince and did a, few step, did a few step overs and ball across the box. Powell scores. That was brilliant. And that's sort of the player I'd heard he was because I did obviously did my transfer video at the end of January. Um, and I was, I, Chris Cowling, a Tottenham fan, sent a video in for uh, talking about Tasha and Oakley Booth. And yeah, he was gutted he'd lost him. Really? He was absolutely gutted because he knows there's a player there. But the problem with, with a team like Tottenham or Chelsea or Arsenal or someone with uh, a high-quality first team 
game time. It's so difficult for for academy graduates to break through because I mean they'll just sign the next best left back. Exactly, and then you've got I mean when I went to that under 18s match at Man City, the chances of them players actually breaking into the first team because the with Man City. They're most. I've got a mate who's a Man City fan, and they're, they're Phil Foden's breaking through for them. But he hasn't yeah. broken through yet. He's he's broken through, but not broken through. He's probably in the same position as someone like Collins or Verlinden or someone like that. They've, they've broken through, but not broken through. But Phil Foden's probably going to be the next one of our own sort of players. Then the one before that. I think it was Mika Richards, the player before that, that Ten-year actually gap. That broke through from their academy because a team like Man City just goes out and spends money on the, the next best thing. I mean, Barcelona do it somewhat well. They sort of try and introduce the players into the Barcelona B team and then bring them up. Yeah. Um, but I think if you're going to sign for an academy, I think championship, lower league... EFL, I think, is your perfect bet, but I wouldn't sign for a Premier League academy sort of thing. No, I mean, I spoke to Ryan Corrigan on the uh, Bear Pits Live, and I think he put it really well. He they were, he said to City, like, oh, they were really supportive of me. Like, they understood what I need. So I think that's the, always the danger with them because with their academy, because they do understand why mm. players want to leave. And I think, yeah, yeah, right, that's what he said. He just said, look, they'll just sign the next best left back. I'm exactly. not going to get get in I mean like Harwood Bellis for example a centre half for Man City uh, Academy who's he got come, who's he got to fight for a position he's got Emerit Laporte um, Stones uh, Otamendi Fernandinho if he plays centre back and then if Pep yeah. Guardiola goes out and signs Koulibaly in the summer that's another one he's got to fight for a position um, so I think I think our academy lads have got a really good chance of breaking yeah. through. Adarabaya is probably in front of him in that as well. Adarabaya hasn't played for like a year. Yeah, and then the, the the last point I wanted to mention about the future, Michael O'Neill. Sentinel put it out. He's been in charge for six months today, and to think yeah. the amount of progress we've made, not only going up that league table yes it's only five or six seven positions but the actual progress we've had we were playing some awful football last year yeah with some of the football we were were watching was not great at all shocking and now to him coming back getting his feet under the desk at Barnsley and we performed really well that day and we're getting there aren't we we're getting there and I think the progress of the squad's getting a lot better as well Lucas has been a completely different player. Joe Allen's been a completely different player. Powell, McLean, McLean, Ince to a degree, Campbell, Smith, Bart, Butland's got his confidence back. You know, yeah. we we've done so so well under him, and again, long may that continue. And to think he's only had one transfer window, and he's brought in three good players: not Jordan Thompson, fantastic. Tash and Blue, fantastic. And uh, James James Collins. No, not James Collins. James Chester. <laughs> Chester. Um, sorry, I was, re- I was reading my notes and saw uh, Nathan Collins. Um, so, yeah, you've got them three players. You've got a really good experienced player in uh, Chester. Um, whether we'll keep him on in the summer, I'm not sure. Would you keep him on? I'd keep him on personally. Yeah, I think he's got everything that you need to become a top class Championship centre half, you need experience, which is the first thing which I mentioned before. Mm. Um, you need that quality, you need that quality which he has got or will get because, like, I've seen people slate him on Twitter, these sort of things like, why is he conceding a penalty against Luton? But anyone mm. can see the penalty, but he didn't, he did the guy did theatrically. Oh, call over, was... I will say that, <laughs> but I think in that whole game, bar that goal, which was probably all the defence's fault, rather than yeah, they, they completely bar switched off. Goal, Smith goal, was dragged to yeah. central, but yeah, but bar that goal, I think he was brilliant. Mm. Won everything. I was really his debut against Charlton was fantastic. Um, won everything. Um, 
I, I would keep him on. The only thing that I don't really like about him, and this one with one bit of criticism I do have for him, is decision making's not very good. That'll come, I think. Say again. I think that'll come. I think that'll come with like cause it's a new team. He's been around mm. like a different group of players. It takes time to settle in, sort of thing. It, his decision making could do with a little bit of work, but if we get if we kind of just get that sorted, I think we've got a brilliant centre back and one of the best in the division. Yeah, me too. And if um, we can get Ryan, if we can get Ryan back, I think he'll be one of the best in the division as well. Because what I saw of him this season so far, and that's only like a game. But that game was against Sheffield Wednesday and completely turned around this comeback. Oh, yeah, that comeback was probably all Ryan, I do have to say. It was, yeah. it was a fantastic comeback. Um, definitely one of my games of the season, that. Sheffield Wednesday. I think had we been under a different manager, and the exact same thing could be said for Wigan, under a different manager for them two home games, um, Wigan and Sheffield Wednesday, I think we'd have gone on to lose. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 100%. Definitely. Um and I think O'Neill has had a massive part to play in um, the turnaround and how we've been doing in the last couple of months. So, without further ado, I did promise this over on my Twitter. My Twitter and Instagram will be in the description. So will Elliot, and he's remembered to do that. So, um, yeah. Um, so what I'm going to do is answer a few of the Q and A questions because I did want to do a Q and A last week, but um, we'll do it this week. Um, so yeah, Daniel Green. 2901 asks, who do you think the best player in the world is? It's always between the two, isn't it? It's between Messi That's and Ronaldo. Right. So, um, I'm, I'm Messi, obviously. I, I think, think you are as well. I think so, Messi. I'll go with Leo. Not the biggest fan of Ronaldo, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I like Ronaldo. He's a good player. But I just think Messi's better. What I like about Messi is this. I mean, like Messi is a player... Like, Ronaldo, you see, like dives, cheats sometimes. Messi's not also a brilliant footballer, like brilliant ability, but he's also like a really, really honest player. Uh, you know, yeah. he gets kicked, he gets hacked, he gets up. He doesn't dive, doesn't cheat. And I think None he's of a this brilliant thing. example. <laughs> Loose in town. Um, <laughs> Sophie Buckland Povey. I'm not sure how that's pronounced. Um, Favourite goal of the season? Uh, in terms of an ability... Uh, I'd say Slufus. In terms yeah. of a moment, I'd say Vokes. Yeah. Couldn't have put it better myself. Jack Hammer 4658. In your opinion, who's been the best Stoke manager? Of uh, my time to put in Stoke, or like. No. I'd, I'm going to go for two. Tony Pulis, because of what he did and how he got us up to the Premier League, kept us there for years. And then the second one, I'm going to go for Tony Waddington. Yeah, yeah. Because I agree that, with that squad he had is the closest we've ever come to winning the Division One title mm. under that team. And we won the 72 League Cup. We were one of the best teams we've ever had under that manager. And he was just fantastic. Yeah, I'd say, uh, I'd say Waddington is one of the best managers we've had. Um, oh, this is before my time. This is just the stories my dad's told me. But I'd say Waddington, Makari. Makari's up there. Uh, yeah, them two. Pulis for what he did, but I never really. But I think I liked to start at football at first, but at the end it got really boring. And I thought, yeah, yeah, this has been like it for years. And now I'd probably say Michael O'Neill. I'd O'Neill, say, I in, think it's too early. He, it's too I'm... early. I'd agree with that. But what I will say is this: Hughes wasn't great. The only reason he was good was because of Pulis's foundations. Yeah. Then the three appointments after that, shocking. Well, Lambert was probably the best out of all of them, but mm. even he wasn't. The man to take us up. No. Rowett was awful. Jones couldn't get a side together. So, I think I think O'Neill's got to be in there now. Even so, because that just shows the quality of managers we've had in our lifetime. Yeah. The next one, it's Jacob12. This is aimed at me. Are you going to carry on your career mode? Yes, I am. Um, I just hate FIFA. Um, Stoke City News. Favourite player for Stoke? Mine's Tyrese. Uh, Ryan. Shawcross. Ryan. Stoke 15. We're flying through these. Uh, how many goals do you think Campbell will get next season? 15 uh, plus. Yeah, it's in his title, 15. 15 plus. Yeah. Uh, Reese, Joe, C. Do you think they should finish uh, the season behind closed doors or start a new one? Depends. Nope. 
it depends. If they're gonna if they're gonna do all this like artificial crowd noises, cardboard cutouts, no. I think they want the season done, but I think it's a bad move, and I think we'll we'll realise it's a bad move when the Bundesliga starts and that's all behind closed doors. And you know, I don't want to watch Stoke on. I don't want to watch Stoke on my own. I want to watch Stoke, you know, with my mates, with my family. I want to. Uh, I want to go to the ground and stuff like that. But obviously, we can't. Um, yeah. So, I'd probably just call it a day and go again in August, September, when if there's a vaccine. Yeah, um, I think that's fair. Tyler Sudes, I can't pronounce that one. He's taught me how to pronounce it, but I've forgotten already. In the next ten years, where do you see Stoke? Premier League. Hard to call 10 years, I'd say. I mean, we I'd don't even pro- have going to have O'Neill in 10 years, so... I'd like to think... I'd like to think we'd be Premier League stable. If we can, if we can keep the academy lads, then, yeah, Premier League. 100%. Uh, who do you think would be a good signing for Stoke? Ooh. Oh. We've, so, we've sort of discussed this, but I'd probably say uh, a left-back. We need any left-back we can. And I think yeah. that team's sorted then. Um, yeah, I'll so I'll probably go for back. Jamal Lewis. I'm trying to think of a, I'm trying to think of a good left back we could have. Oh, geez. bring back Peters. No, I don't think he'd come. To be honest, I don't think that'd be a good move. Apparently, his attitude's a little bit. Mm. What about so, Bauer? Would you take Bauer back to play left back? No, Bauer's got a bad attitude. Uh, he was I good for know. us though. That pr- last bit of the Premier League was very good. Yeah, he was good for us, but I think oh, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure about him at all. In terms of his attitude, what Celtic have been saying and everything, and Celtic play to win. I mean, they're in the. Yeah. I mean, they are. I mean, they are miles ahead of everyone else. But like, they play to win, and clearly Bauer isn't good to have around them. So I would. So personally, I wouldn't bring him back, sell him on. Um, yeah, I think he's one. Of, I think he's in that category of being Boolers and the other characters who've got bad attitudes. I think as well. So wouldn't keep Bauer on. I'm trying. I would. I'll come back to you on a left back though. Oh, just have a think about it. Uh, Lucas Winston asks, do you think Lee Gregory will leave when the transfer window opens? Depends how Mo Sanko comes through. Yeah, I think Gregory works so hard. You can't fault him for that. First touch could do with a little bit of work. His end product could definitely do with a bit of work, but he's, he, he works hard. Um and if I'm yeah. on about, if I'm going to get on, if I'm going to bring someone on as a substitute, I'd bring Sam Vokes on. Yeah. Sometimes, I sometimes I've been sort of critical with him um, about how much he runs, he's sometimes his end product, but when he's on, he does score. Yeah. And I think I mean, there's, yeah. a, there's a, a bit of a joke on Twitter, isn't there? When 2 pm, when the lineup comes out and Vokes starts, everyone's like, oh, here we go again. But then, like, 10 minutes in, he'll score. And then everyone was yeah. like, hey. So, I'd, 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 I'd rather have Sam Vokes because when he plays, he scores. Yeah, that's what I'd say as well. I'd have Vokes on the bench with Mo Sanko, depending on 100%. how, depends how get, the game how gets through. How the game pans out and what sort of play you need. Because if you play in Leeds, I wouldn't chuck Mo Sanko on. I'd no, put Sam no. Vokes on. Um, Stoke City FC fan page. Uh, Favourite Stoke player of any era? Shakiri. Bojan. Shakiri for me. Love, I love Shaq, I do. Gave me, gave me the best moment of that relegation season, that free kick, and then Van Arnold has to ruin it. Um, who would you bring in for next season? It's, an, it's another transfer, but I'd definitely... Jamal Lewis. We need a left-back. And then yeah. Sam, one, three, four. What are your thoughts on Campbell's future? If he continues to work hard, continues to... Um, play how he's done before the lockdown break he's going to be the next um, England striker behind Harry Kane fact yeah who, who um, even is Dominic, Dominic Calvert-Lewin never heard of him who is he who's Dominic never heard of him um, George Loud and Proud in Quarantent uh, do you want us to write and sing a theme tune go for it go for it if um, Tyrese gets um, number 10 next year, it's going to be Tyrese Campbell, City's number 10. Yeah. 
good. That would be a decent tune, that would. But I think it would as well. Um, I don't like the whole players sharing chance because you've got Ryan and uh, Tyrese that share chance. But I'm, yeah. I, I think you need to are trying to make a new way. Uh, I don't think chance, there's anyone. Chance for Ryan Shawcross. I don't think you've got like a number ten at the moment though, so I don't think it'll be taking anyone's chance or just be spinning off an old one. I think um, Ryan and Tyrese have the same chance at the moment. Yeah, because I just think we just thought of one off the cuff. I remember we uh, signed Steve Sidwell once. Do you remember the Charlie Adams song we had? Mm. Like Char- yeah, we had that one, and then we also sung it for Steve Sidwell because he was warming up next to him. I think we just like, you know. Try to think things as quickly as possible without really pushing. I think the best chance chant we've had in recent years is definitely the O'Neill one. Nah, La Bamba. It's the same. It's the same tune. Well, still. Then, then chant. We, we, we were the originals. With Muniesa. We were the Muniesa originals for that La Bamba with Muniesa. Uh, yeah. Liam Bromley talking about the P word. <laughs> Do you think we can push for promotion next season? I don't see why not. If we, Me neither. if we continue to progress how we have under O'Neill at the moment, I, there's no reason why we can't. Um, I think if we get it right this summer, I, I said last summer, all summer, I said we'll either get it right and go up or get it wrong and go down. Mm. And it's yeah. sort, we sort of, if you'd look at that and you think, oh, got it a bit wrong. Um, but if we continue to be how we have been under O'Neill, then... Or by all means, I think we can do it. Just not going to get my hopes up before the season starts. I think if we're 10 or so games in and we're in that top eight, you know, pushing, I think we can sort of start to dream. Yeah, but I think we, we can. can. Only, we can only dream after Christmas. I've always said that, only dream after Christmas. Mm, yeah. We've, I'm, so many we've... things change in that Christmas period. I mean, look at Sheffield Wednesday. They were third when we played them. Third. And now they're like fifteenth. We can finish ahead of them if results go our way. We yeah. can finish above Sheffield Wednesday, which is completely mental. They they completely derailed. We were sort of we were the start, we were the tipping point of that. I think to be honest, sort of like Leeds last, last year. Sort of like Leeds last year, weren't they? When we beat them. So yeah, Stoke City ruining promotion uh, charges since two thousand and eighteen. Come on, the boys. Uh, the final two questions: Who is the most underrated Stoke player? Oh, that, that's a question and a half from Reese. I'd say Martin Zindi, I'd go for because he's yeah, Martin Zindi left back at first. He's not a left back at first, though, so I don't think that's why. Um, I don't think that's why he should be in there. But um, he's not a left back, first of all, and he does a job. He's been put in there, and he does a job. I think Martin Zindi for me. It is definitely a shout. Um, You've got other ones, like McLean's underrated, to a degree. He's underrated. Oh. Mum, I'm, recor- I'm recording. What are you doing? I'm so sorry, mate. No, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Um, but yeah, for M- McLean's definitely underrated. Tommy Smith's underrated. He, yeah. he can put a ball in. He can put a ball in and defend sort of really well as well. Yeah, I think so as well. I think... I yeah, love I love Tommy Smith. Zindi. I do. Yeah, I mean, you could. Who would you argue? Maybe last year, like last year, underrated. Really anyone? Um, so I can't really. Because it's always the new. I think it. I, in my opinion, it's always going to be Martin Zindi this year because of what he's done in this left back mm-hmm. position. But he yeah. does want to leave. Last year, uh, I'd probably give it to Eric Peters for that first half. He was really underrated. I'd, Actually, this isn't me being like a Bojan fanboy or anything, but I'd say Bojan, because whenever he came on, we always had that bit of a spark. Yeah, going forward, I think we could have really done with Bojan in this system. I um, think he would have worked under O'Neill, I think, as well. Imagine that. Imagine that. Do you reckon, like, I mean, yeah. Do you reckon we can have the uh, Tres Amigos returning for a bit of a reunion? Hosselu, Bojan and Muniesa? For Ryan's testimonial, yes. But, Ryan's um... testimonial. <laughs> Get it done. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I I could see Money S maybe coming back. Depends. He's got a lot of money out there in um. What's it? Yeah, Alamo, but he always he, he always has a play. He, he always says on social media he always says he wants to come back. Left and then, back replacement guys. Come on! What other transfer rumours can we uh, 
spin up now. Um, Will Greg. Um, Nathan Stokey Dre, final question. Best match you've been to? Ooh. Um, in terms of this season, it'll be the Sheffield Wednesday one. In terms yeah. of the, like the game itself. Um, maybe of all time, I'd say the Wembley 5 0, because the way everyone just looked around us in total shock. Um, for me, it was probably the Chelsea Cup final, uh, Cup, not Cup final. I was not alive then, nor were my parents. Um, no, the Chelsea Cup game when we beat them on penalties, that was a solid, solid night. We, yeah. we, we were really good. Phil Bardsley taking one for the team, um, but had he have not done that, I think we'd have gone on to lose in uh, extra time. Um and then we beat beat on penalties, two lots of limbs. What more can you want? Yeah, I know. I and think then, um... I think that night was just topped by you know we've just beaten the champions. I think that's what I can remember just saying in my head. We've just beat Chelsea. We've just beat Chelsea. We've just beat Chelsea. Like because I was going that... absolutely ballistic when that penalty was saved. Yeah, I think yeah, that's what one was. I speak I for everyone that. in that ground. I think that was Chelsea. the season they went. I think that was the season they went. Like sort of, I think they finished tenth that year. That was but even yeah, that so, was like, that year. to finish. But even so, like we didn't know they were going to finish tenth that year. And that was when Rubinho the champions lost the plot, wasn't it? Yeah, he got a stadium ban after. I think we played them like seven days later, and then on off. Yeah, it was on our bicycle. Yeah. So yeah, that does wrap it up. Uh, sorry, this one's been a little bit shorter. We are recording. On the Friday, and I've got to get this edited, uploaded, and everything. And I've been really busy this week, so sorry it's a short episode. Sorry it might not have been the most interesting episode talking about the future. Um, but yeah, I'll be back next week uh, for another podcast. I might upload my championship team of the season uh, maybe early next week. Um, and I'm so, I'm getting ready for the biased comments. I am. Um, mm-hmm. So there's a hint as to who's made the cut for me. But yeah. Thank you. Also, I want to say a massive, massive thank you for 1,800 subscribers. I should have said it at the start, but I'll say it now. Um, yeah, a massive, massive thank you for 1,800 subscribers. It's not been the easiest time uh, on YouTube to think of video ideas, but um, we've got there in the end, and hopefully we can push towards 2K by the time football returns. And I've just realised, what is my hair doing? I've just, we literally just recorded the old podcast, and what is my hair doing? But anyway, guys... Hope you guys have enjoyed uh, another podcast. I'll be back for ne- uh, back next week for another podcast, and I'll be hopefully uploading Monday. But anyway, guys, hope you guys have enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next one. Elliot, go on, Stoke. Go on, Stoke. That stopped, and that needs stopping.